It's time for the coaches. The coaches of Hayden Fry. The coaching tree, as per Hayden Fry, legendary coach Hayden Fry. I understand that these uh, coaches got to meet with Hayden FaceTime today, or earlier today, and uh, so they've all had their greetings from the, uh, their boss, Hayden Fry. At this time, I'd like to introduce the University of Iowa Sports Information Director Emeritus, Mr. Phil Hattie. Thanks, and welcome to all of you who's making this the second panel of the day, and we'll get them all up here, and then we'll uh, introduce them, the greatest coaching staff in the history of NCAA football. Come on up and sit behind your name. Now, there's a couple missing, and they're missing for uh, a good reason. The first and obvious one that's missing is Coach Kirk Ferentz. And also missing, he's got a game tomorrow, Coach Bill Snyder and the athletic director at Wisconsin, Barry Alvarez. So uh, we're going to say uh, further Coach Ferentz at that time coached the offensive line. Barry Alvarez coached linebackers, and Bill Snyder was the offensive coordinator and worked with the quarterbacks. Now, as we introduce the others here, we'll have them stand up so you know exactly who we're talking about during it. He was Iowa's strength coach under Coach Fry, Bill Durvridge. The defensive coordinator, and he worked with the defensive backs also, Bill Brazier, sitting on the end. <laughs> Considered by just about everybody one of the defensive geniuses in college football history. Running back coach, he was also with the 49ers, Carl Jackson. This guy was our defensive line coach. He coached at Iowa State, the junior college, a little bit uh, west of us. North Texas, a great coach, Dan McCarney. He worked with the offense, a receivers coach. He was a head coach at Southwest Missouri State, Del Miller. The defensive end coach for the Hawkeyes, Bernie Wyatt. He coached defensive backs. He went to Kansas State. He went to Florida. And he spent quite a bit of time at Oklahoma, where he had some degree of success. Bobby Stoops. He was Iowa's tight end coach, a head coach at Western Illinois, Don Patterson. I think we got him there. Now, before we actually start, uh, first and foremost, we're here for one reason. That's because of the greatest uh, coach we've ever known, and that's Hayden Fry. Couldn't be here, but he did send this message for these coaches and everybody, and I'll read exactly what he sent me. First of all, let me say to all of you how disappointed I am that I'm not being able to be with you this weekend. I underwent surgery earlier this week, and traveling back to Iowa City wasn't possible. I especially regret not being there, knowing that the most gifted staff, that 1983 coaching staff, is present. Many have said this staff was the best in college football history. I'll let the so-called experts argue that point. But to me, it turned out to be a group that became very close and incredibly talented at what they were hired to do. They were teachers of young men who made all of us look good with their performances. I'll always love everyone on this coaching staff and will be eternally grateful for all they did for me, the University of Iowa, and the hundreds of student athletes who were fortunate enough to be coached by this group. I don't want to single out anyone on this staff, 
They were all so different, but when put together, I was given the gift of the best coaching staff ever. To those coaches, Bump Elliott, our support staff, and everyone connected with Iowa football, Shirley and I send our love and best wishes. Good luck this football season, and have a wonderful Fry Fest. I hope to join you next year. Hayden Fry. And Hayden is doing well, and uh, he's sorry he couldn't make it back. So uh, we're going to start this out, and we're just going to uh, go right down the line. First of all, you've got mics in front of you. Be sure and uh, hold them up close to you. And I want to, we'll ask a few questions after this, but uh, tell us your impressions of working with this staff and how you enjoyed or not enjoyed your time at Iowa as coach and your reflections of being with this staff and what you think back on right now. Just uh, a few minutes of your reflections. First of all, we'll go right down the line. We'll start with Bill Durbridge. No. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, m my impression of Coach Fry, he was uh, one of the greatest persons I've been around. He uh, gave me the opportunity to come here to Iowa back in 1980 as the first strength coach here at the university. So uh, I had a great opportunity to develop and, and grow under him. And one of the things he always told me was, uh, you know, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. And and he lived up to that saying because he surrounded himself with some great people. And it was a real joy for me to, to be with this staff and the things we did. And uh, really can't, can't say any more than the, the greatest opportunity I've ever had. Thank you. Bobby Stoops. Um, you know, the biggest break in my life was uh, Bob Cummings and his staff giving me an, a scholarship to come to the University of Iowa. Big, by far and away, biggest break of my life. And then to be surrounded by all these guys are mentors of mine. Uh, I look to them all the time, Coach Brazier to start with, but every one of these guys, I was around the best coaching staff in the country as a player, as a young coach. And I owe all of that success, everything that's happened to me from, from moving forward because of, so, because of these guys and this experience I thank the state of Iowa for all your support through the years. You've been great to my family. My mother sends her best wishes to all of you. She blesses all of you every daily. My wife is an Iowa girl to this day. We might be playing Texas, but she wakes up every Saturday and she says, go Hawks. So anyway, so thank you. That's that line, once a hawk, always a hawkeye. So, uh, Del Miller. Well, I guess probably like so many of these guys up here say, I was very, very grateful for the opportunity that Coach Fry gave me and uh, spent 45 years in coaching, 38 at Division One level, and it all because of he gave me that opportunity to start with. And uh, certainly everything that I was able to learn from all these coaches up here and so many, many players, uh, you know, you remember those things. Those are things you remember the rest of your life. And, you know, Iowa, you got to understand, Iowa is a special place. The University of Iowa is a special place. Uh, you know, I spent 20 years down at Kansas State now with Bill Snyder, and, and we've had some great, great years down there. But nothing compares to the, the loyalty and the, the fan support and so forth you get here at Iowa. Of course, I grew up in the state of Iowa and, and uh, probably was a Hawkeye from uh, the day I was born, so I, I guess uh, that might have something to do with it too. But very, very grateful for the opportunity. Very, very grateful for the opportunity to spend the time with these coaches. Bernie Wyatt. Well, I had to come a long way. I came from New York, playing high school ball there, and uh, Whitey Pirro, I don't know if you remember him, but uh, he was the coach that recruited me, and he did me the biggest favor of my life. He got me here, and once I got here, I stayed. But uh, Bob Cummings also helped me, and uh, then came Hayden, and I wasn't too sure, because Hayden waited to the very end uh, to hire me, but uh, he was a great mentor and a great individual, 
and he wanted perfection. And most of the time we gave him that. So uh, I'm still here in Iowa, and I'm going to probably get planted here in Iowa. So. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's nice to be here, and I hope you enjoy the game tomorrow. We're, uh, I think you all remember the, uh, the Pirro family, and we're still trying to figure out how much money Whitey Pirro paid Bernie to come play for the University of Iowa because he did have offers from Notre Dame way back when, but uh, Bernie, one of the uh, outstanding players uh, under Forrest Devashevsky in, the, in that era. so. Don Patterson. You know, I'm reminded, uh, a wise person once said, it's amazing how much you can accomplish when no one worries about who gets the credit. And I think that's the key to our success. Back in those early 80s, none of us were concerned with, with uh, how we might get ahead of someone else on staff. We were all working together, all pulling in the same direction. And that's how you accomplish great things. And most of you are already aware, but if you're not aware, I'm going to mention it now. To be able to go to Pasadena in year three, that is still the fastest turnaround in the history of the Big Ten. Something we should all take pride in. Now, next we've got... Now, can anyone tell me, does this guy look any different than he did 30 years ago? Carl Jackson, the guy doesn't age one bit. Carl. Thanks, Bill. Uh, I was a part of Coach Fry's first staff here at the University of Iowa. Uh, I was on his staff at North Texas, and when he asked everybody on the staff who would all come to Iowa with him if he took the job, everybody held their hand up but me. So he wanted to know why. I told him I didn't know anything about Iowa, and I didn't know anybody to call and ask. <laughs> but coming to Iowa was you know, one of the best decisions that I've ever made for myself and my family. Uh, Iowa City is very special, a very special place. I think my wife and my family all enjoyed themselves here. You know, I enjoyed it so much, I came back for a second term. I came with Hayden, and then I left, and then when Kirk took over, he offered me a job, and we came back. So uh, we've had a great experience here at, at Iowa. Had an opportunity to work with a lot of great coaches, and uh, had a chance to win a lot of football games, and it's just great to be back here. I saw a lot of old friends today, a lot of people I haven't seen in many, many years, but it's very special to be here today, and we're looking forward to big win tomorrow. Thank you. One of the greatest Hawkeye players and coaches, Dan McCarney. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. This never changes now, and I grew up here and spent 36 years here, and I come back, and I uh, visited my high, went by my high school, my grade school, my junior high yesterday, and my parents' graves. And um, you drive around Iowa City, and one thing is always a constant. It's one of the great places in America. And if you've never lived here or worked here or spent any time in Iowa City, you don't get it. You don't really understand it. But if you've been here like we all have and have this unbelievable passion and love for Iowa City and the University of Iowa, it doesn't get any better. It just doesn't. It's great to be a hawk. I mean, it's great to be a hawk. It really is. I won't bore you with any of the details, but um, I was the youngest at the time when Hayden came in and these guys all came from Texas. Um, I was 25 years old and um, I went in for an interview with Coach Fry and I thought it was going to last about a minute and a half and I'd be out of there. And uh, he said after about 15 minutes, well, Mac, what do you think about being my tight end coach for about $18,000? And I literally jumped off the couch. I jumped off the couch. and. To have that opportunity and have that joy to come to work and be around these professionals that are up here and be some small part of the history that we made here together is something I'll never, ever forget. And I hope you won't either because these guys are unbelievable. I was in there listening to the Hall of Famers and Bob Sanders and, and Nate Cady, these guys that were some of the best ever pulled on a uniform. It, it's just such a joy to be related to and, and a part of Iowa football history. And by the way, there's two of them up here right now I don't know how we can make sure we stuff that ballot box, but damn, Bernie White and Bobby Stoops ought to be in the Iowa Hall of Fame, too, now. And I appreciate that 20 bucks that both you guys gave me to get, say that tonight, too, but today. But I will just say this much. Um, 
there's, there's some guys up here right now, and I said this last night at dinner, and Bill Brazier and Carl Jackson and Bernie Wyatt, you know, we all get a lot of recognition because of the opportunities we got. And Aiden Fry, as I talked to him a few days ago, one of the things he's so proud of is the 29 assistant coaches that got to be head coaches. And ESPN did a study, and it's number one in America, ahead of Bear Bryant and Bobby Bowden, which is pretty special. That's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. But don't let this get lost in the shuffle and Braze and Carl and Bernie Wyatt. But these guys didn't get a chance to be head coaches in Division I football. We never would have accomplished what we did here at Iowa together and be part of history forever for generations to come without these guys. And they didn't get those opportunities to be college football head coaches, but from the inside, as good as I've ever, ever been around. And they impacted our lives. We all did our part. Um, we were motivated for a lot of reasons. None of us wanted to get fired. We all wanted to be here. And yet, Hayden Fry did this for all of us. He set expectations, and then every day he inspired each of us to live up to those expectations. And I'm a better person, a better coach. My lifetime has been so enhanced because of the opportunity to be with the guys here at the table and the coaches that aren't here tonight. And you look at Barry Alvarez, Bill Snyder, Hayden Fry are already in the Hall of Fame. And there's two more slots reserved right now for Bobby Stoops and Kirk Ferentz, and they're going too. It's pretty special to be a Hawkeye. Thanks a lot. Now this uh, next guy we're going to introduce here, it, it's, it's a pretty special uh, person here. He is a little bit older than Hayden Fry. He was born in the same hospital as Hayden Fry in the same town and the same doctor delivered both babies back then in Texas. So uh, that connection was from day one between Bill Brazier and Hayden Fry, and they were as close of friends uh, as friends could be, uh, and they are to this day. Bill Brazier, our defensive coordinator. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to be here, to be any place where football is played and coached and with the great fans that that come to see the game on Saturday. So it was, uh, I was so happy to be in that kind of environment for all my life and to say that everybody should know that Iowa City is the best place to be if you want to coach football, play football, or be a football. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here tonight. Thank you, Bill. Now, I, I'm going to say a few things, and what, while I'm saying these few things, I want you to think of maybe the nicest or greatest thing you can remember about your coaching or playing days at, at Iowa the thing that you remember most and the thing you'll cherish most or maybe the funniest thing, some, you know, a funny story, something like that. But we, we do want to remind you something about this staff. There's three coaches already in the Hall of Fame. And as we said, there's a couple more probably headed. Bobby here is maybe headed there and we think Kirk Ferentz will be headed there. What a, what a tradition. And as he said earlier, right now Hayden Fry is recognized as having the biggest coaching tree in NCAA college football history and what a legacy that is for that coach and I would dare say and in, in speaking with him I had a couple chances to speak with him this week and he said the success he had would not have been possible at all if you take one person out of this mix it's taken an important spoke out of a tire you take one person out, and probably the success that we enjoyed at the University of Iowa wouldn't be what it was for them, and probably wouldn't be what it was today. But as a cohesive group, they were all great friends, and they all worked together, and you saw what happened. And I remember way back when, when Bill Brazier told me after we went to that first Rose Bowl, he says, you better buckle up, because we're going every year from now on <laughs> to a bowl game. Not the Rose Bowl every year, but... He was right, too. So uh, this staff, uh, Bill Durridge, tell us what, what's maybe your favorite uh, memory of working with Coach Fry or in, and with this group or staff. Uh, go ahead and uh, just tell us what you think. Well, probably the greatest moment I've had is the, 
when I got out here in 1980 and then the 81 season going to the Rose Bowl. I mean, being going to the granddaddy of all bowls, it's just a great, great feeling. And being able to uh, be part of that and help develop the players through uh, the strength training and program, it really uh, was a great thrill of my life. And, uh, and you couldn't ask for a better opportunity at the age I was at. And uh, so I uh, have to say that is one of my greatest moments here. Bobby, I want to uh, throw it out for you. you you've uh, hit every uh, degree of success. Your family, unbelievably important to the Hawkeyes. We had three Stoops brothers that played here uh, at the university. Uh, yourself, Mike, Mark, all with unbelievable success. And uh, your dad and mom were a, a big part of the Iowa program, too. In fact, my mother uh, was sitting in front of a Michigan couple and, and she her overheard the, the woman say to her husband, that 41 has been here forever. Is he ever going to leave? <laughs> and my mother had to turn around and tell her there's been one of us here for 10 years. So three different ones. So uh, my, my fondest moment is uh, definitely beating Michigan State here with, after a blizzard clearing snow all over the side of the fields, beating Michigan State, and we know midway through, maybe the second, third quarter, somehow we hear the fans cheering that Ohio State just beat Michigan, I guess, right? And, and we know if we win and we, we've got control of the game, we're going to the Rose Bowl. And winning the game handily, and the mob of people on the field I've never been frightened before. I was like, holy cow, we got to get out of here. I latch on to Todd Simonson, the back of his, he goes, grab onto my pads. He was a lot bigger than me. And we, he, he, I just got behind him and we got out of there. Like, let, let's get the heck off the field. And the roses in the locker room and going to the Rose Bowl after, been 20 years, right, since we had gone to a bowl game. And of all places, we're going to Pasadena. So, yeah, that was a, a, about as special as it gets. So one of my favorite moments of all time of any, any games I've been, been a part of. So. And, and some of these younger people, these coaches will all remember this. We had a Friday night get together with the press and we had bowl representatives there. And the bowl we were going to was the Liberty Bowl. We were all set. Everybody figured the Michigan-Ohio State game was gonna, fig was gonna go the way the favorite was supposed to win. And uh, we were all set to go to the Liberty Bowl, and all, all of a sudden, uh, the roses uh, started coming down. And uh, you're right, that's maybe, uh, it, in my years as SID, I said that was when I saw the president throwing roses off the top of the press box late in the fourth quarter, that and, was... Uh, the, and the celebration that night was pretty special, too. So we, <laughs> we had a big time. <laughs> There was a lot of parties going on and I it was a 20 uh, party 20 years overdue or something like that. Dell, go ahead. Well, there's a lot of great memories. Obviously, I already mentioned one, just the camaraderie with, with players and staff. Uh, that, those are the things you remember forever, but probably a couple things, I guess. One is when we were number one and Michigan's number two and we kicked the field goal at the two seconds left Rob Houtland uh, to win that game. Uh, that was pretty special. Uh, did have another time where I remember with Coach Fry, uh, you know, when I, after Bernie got done being recruiting coordinator, I ended up being recruiting coordinator, and, and uh, he always had a rule. He couldn't talk to, about any of the recruiting to any of the f f you people or donors or anything else. And so I was sitting in my office, and Hayden walks in, and so he's sitting on the couch, and Roy Carver calls up. And some of you may not remember Roy, but, but was a big benefactor for the university. And he's asking, Roy Carver's asking me about recruiting, and I didn't want to upset him. And Hayden's sitting there laughing his fanny off at me because I'm following his rules. And it was just a, it was a tough situation. But, uh, and he thought it was really funny. So, at any rate. Bernie. You could usually break rules when it came to Roy, I guess. Uh, uh, well, you probably could, but I was do, doing my very best to be loyal to Hayden. It depends. <laughs> That's where my way. check was coming from. So, Bernie? Well, as I said before, the best thing that ever happened to me is to come to Iowa. And uh, I know I didn't make my dad very happy because I had a scholarship offered at Notre Dame. And, you know, they, 
they have a great reputation, and it's a good school, no doubt about it. But uh, my dad never said anything to me until we went to the Rose Bowl and won. He said, you're smarter than I thought you were. <laughs> but uh, that was uh, one of the best moments of my life, going to the Rose Bowl. and it's, It was unbelievable, and I haven't been back since. Now, Bernie, were you the MVP? Yeah, I was MVP. That, that would have been. Come on now. Come on. Now tell us, a, tell us a little bit about that, you being the MVP in the Rose well, Bowl. That, uh, that's, not everybody has that honor. No, uh, you know, and it surprised me, and I, I did play very well. But, uh, and I wasn't the biggest guy. I was about 160 pounds, uh, ring and wet. But uh, it... It's unbelievable. If you've never been to the Rose Bowl, to just even be a spectator, that's one thing you should do. It's, it's a great, great venue. So uh, I watch it every year. That's why they call it the granddaddy. Donnie Patterson. You know, there have been a lot of memorable moments, but one that comes to mind for me, um, we lost some great coaches, as you know, late in the 80s. And then 1989 was one of those rare losing seasons. And there were fans that even said at the time, I think we might need a coaching change. It meant so much to those of us that were part of that 1990 staff. We not only bounced back, we bounced back all the way to Pasadena, uh, the third Rose Bowl trip in, in Coach Rice 20 years. Uh, and then to go one step further from that, 1990 was a wonderful season, but one year later, we were actually 10 and one, as some of you might recall. We lost only to Michigan. Michigan went to Pasadena, but I'll never forget what Coach Fry said after that, after that season. He said, the smartest thing we did is we never told them that they weren't that good. And there's a lot of truth in that. Those guys played better than what they could even imagine, and that's how you define great coaching. And that fall, we got that done to a high degree, no doubt about it. Carl Jackson. You know, it's pretty difficult to come up with, you know, one... Uh, you know, incidental, one thing that, that stood out in my mind. You know, I was very lucky to be on Coach Fry and Coach Ferentz's staff. And uh, I was a part of three Big Ten championships with Coach Fry and two with Coach Ferentz. And I guess at the time, you don't realize how important it is to win the Big Ten championship and how difficult it is to win the Big Ten championship. So being a part of five Big Ten championships was pretty special. And that stands out in my mind. And, uh, you know, like I said, winning the Big Ten is not easy. And I think all of us would agree to that. So that's kind of the thing that I remember the most about my time here at Iowa. Now, you probably already noticed we have to really get Dan McCartney pumped up because he's really got a, he's got a lack of excitement about the staff in that. But... Can I tell you, that's one of the reasons he was the great coach wherever he was that he was. So, Dan, you're up next. Yeah, li listen, just two things, uh, and I will mention one of them that I'll, I'll never forget as long as I live. And uh, these guys probably remember it. We didn't even recall this one last night. But it's that same season, 1981, magical, unbelievable, Brage. Um, I grew up sneaking into Iowa games. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to have any winning seasons or bowl games as a player trying to give everything that I had as all my teammates did but it just wasn't right the pieces weren't in place the leadership wasn't here the coach wasn't in place and then all of a sudden Hayden came in and brought the staff from Texas and he retained Bernie and I we got opportunities to stay here that was really cool but we're getting ready to play Michigan that year Stoopsie and that defense was unbelievable I know there's been a lot of great defenses and there's going to be another one tomorrow I think a phenomenal defense here at Iowa but uh, at whatever time we all have left on the face of the earth, that's one of the great ones that I've ever been a part of in 1981. I was a part of 20-some bowl games, a national championship at Florida. That 1981 defense, God, wow, unbelievable. And it, they took turns hitting people, and they took turns being violent, they took turns being vicious, and they took turns breaking rules the way they played the game, led by Bobby Stoops back there at safety. <laughs> He threw more clotheslines than any safeties that I've ever seen in the history of Big Ten football. But it was the attitude, the mentality. And we're getting ready to go play Michigan, and Iowa hadn't beaten Michigan in a long, long time. 
and we knew we were going to have to play really good defense. In the end, it was a 9-7 victory. But prior to that, behind the scenes, Coach Fry mentioned to us, if you guys remember, in a team meeting, I'm going to tell you what, whatever it takes, if I got to go out there at the 50-yard line and, and, and box Bo, Bo Schembechler and kick his butt to win that game, that's what we'll do. And meanwhile, we're all thinking, that may not be a real good idea, Coach. I don't think you may want to do that. Just leave it up to the players. But we laughed and, and enjoyed it, and that victory up there in the big house was one of the great victories I was ever a part of, as, as all of us were. But it, it just it, it spoke so well, I think, of the attitude, the mentality, and uh, somehow, some way, despite the outside expectations, it meant nothing to us as coaches and players. We were going to find a way to win that game, and we did, and, and the rest is history. Thanks a lot. Bill Brazier, why don't you tell us what are your favorite recollections of you and Hayden as close personal friends? Uh, well, yeah, both of us were born and raised in Eastland, Texas, which is a very small town in Texas. And uh, we got together back after we had both gra gra graduated from high school and been in the end of the college game. So our, our time together was very, very important for both of us because it, it, it had been a long time since that team that we were going to coach had had a winning season. So that's my thoughts about Hayden, and I'll always thank him and, and for, for the privilege of keeping me on the staff when he came there and uh, what we did when he was there. Well, I will say to you that Hayden Fry said, Hayden Fry wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame this is what he said, he wouldn't have had any of the victories he had at Iowa were it not for his childhood friend, Bill Brazier. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I, I, I think uh, you were a little bit more of an important cog than maybe you think you were in, uh, <laughs> in, all, in all of Iowa's success. Yeah. And uh, I, I think we all need to be cognizant of the fact Hayden Fry at Iowa, 20 years. He shares the record for most wins by an Iowa coach ever. Kirk Ferentz, starting his 20th year, he shares the record for most wins, and that's uh, gonna fall pretty soon. You know, we hopefully it'll be tomorrow, but uh, what are the chances? I mean, we're, we're not uh, talking about Alabama or some, something else. What are the chances two consecutive coaches coming to the University of Iowa and stay in 20 years apiece, and it's gonna be 20 plus for Kirk Ferentz. I mean, that, that says something for fans like you, the state of Iowa, and the warmth, they, you know, they'd be out of here in a hurry if things weren't to their liking. So uh, a lot of this uh, credit has to go to the fans, the university, the state, and everybody around, because if it's not a nice place to live and not a nice place to work, you guys wouldn't have been here as long as you did. Now. Bill Durbridge, you still got your mic here? Tell us a little bit, you, you along with Donnie, and uh, let's see, I guess that's it, we're with Coach Fry the entire time he was here. How did weight training, you, you went from a weight training specialist, then you became the team coordinator, you know, and stuff like that, but how did weight training change? How is it then, how is it now, and, and what do they do different? Well, I'll tell you what, they don't really do much more different things than we used to do. Uh, one thing is the weight rooms are a lot bigger than they were when I first got out here. We only had like about a 2,000 square foot weight room and it was brand new. It was one of the top in the uh, Big Ten conference and now today what 10,000 is uh, small. But uh, one of the big things I think has really changed uh, since uh, 83 when I was the weight coach is that the student athletes get meals, get some food. They, uh, when we were back in '83, we had they, they we had a ruling where you could only have feed the players one time a day. Well, today, you know, you get three meals. They have refuel stations, and and they have an opportunity to gain the weight and maintain it. 
But uh, I don't know if the statute of limitations ran out on this, but I, I had a, uh, one of the great opportunities here with the Johnson County Eye Club and the Johnson County uh, Cattlemen Association. And all this, every summer they would cook out steaks for us out at the reservoir. We sneak out to the reservoir and, and have dinner out there so that the players could, in the summertime could get at least one meal a day. But uh, that was, uh, you know, I think one of the biggest changes in uh, strength training today is just the opportunity for the players to eat more properly, you know, have the proper uh, uh, food there for them to maintain their weight and continue to grow. Bobby, I want to ask you, because you've been there, and being humble, you sit there shaking your head, but you're headed for the Hall of Fame. I want to ask you, how did Hayden Fry and Kirk Ferentz, how did they do what they've done at the University of Iowa? Like I said, we're not, we're not talking uh, Ohio State that has all those built-in advantages and stuff like that, but they've been able to do it. Well, as you, you said earlier, and, and, and Kirk, uh, being introduced by Nate Kading uh, in the luncheon just a minute ago, we do it right here. Coach Fry did it the right way, the correct way. Kirk does it the right way. Cares about his players. They work hard. They're tough. Play smart. Play hard. That's what Iowa's always done, and and we've had a great deal of success doing it. And uh, so I think doing it the right way matters. I tried to to do the same thing at Oklahoma. I. I told my player or my coaches forever, look, I'll lose before I cheat or do it the wrong way. We're going to do it the right way by the books. And I, I, you know, I know Kirk has always been that way as well, you know, and, and Coach Fry. You got great assistants, great people around you. You recruit the right guys that fit your program, and you win. And, um, you know, we continue to do it here. And that's why I've always been proud to be a Hawkeye. What about... Uh as a national championship coach, what was the most important thing you took from Hayden Fry and that you still used up until your last year of coaching? I think as much as anything, swagger. When, when Hayden walked in, in our building, and you guys all know it, he walked in the meeting room, whether that was his true personality or whether he gave himself, because I've had both. I have, I have a natural swagger, but there's plenty of times where I gave myself a talking to before I walked in my staff meeting, before I walked in front of my team, you better project what you want. And so you pick yourself up and you're like, this is, you know, you, here I go. And I'm sure Hayden had his times that he had to just, he had to put it on, but he, he had a swagger and he, he projected confidence. And that's what we needed at the time at Iowa. And we were like, you know what? We're, with him, we, we beat anybody. We, we're, we're as good as them, and that's what happened. Little by little, we all gravitated to it, and we got tired of losing. And Hayden gave us that kind of swagger and that attitude. And I've always remembered it. And, and I, if I gave my team anything at Oklahoma, it was that, that look, nobody should beat us. I don't, I don't care what day it is. I don't care who we have hurt. It doesn't matter. You should, you should be ready to win, you know? And I, I think Hayden was all about that. He, he was indeed. And you're uh, considered one of the greatest Sooners ever, but just listening to you talk, that's why you'll always be considered one of the greatest Hawkeyes. Well, thank you. I hope to be, yeah. Now, Del Miller has spent the majority of his career working with and under Bill Snyder. Now, Bill Snyder, I, I don't want to say has the reputation of being a ridiculously tire, tirelessly work, you know, workman, but uh, he was known for coming in the office sometime at 5, 5.30 and working till like 11, 11.30 at night. So how was it during your, what, 16, how many years at K-State? Uh, 20. 20. 20 years there. Did he, did he change at all from his Iowa days? And, and just tell us a little bit how Bill Snyder's doing now and your relationship with Bill. Yeah. Well, first of all, Bill would have liked to have been here, obviously, but he's 78 years old and he's still going just as strong as ever. He is worried about winning a ball game on Saturday. And uh, he, uh, yeah, he, he is a workaholic. 
uh, just as he was here. He dots the I's, crosses the T's, doesn't take anything for granted. Uh, learned so much from Coach Fry. Uh, actually, we went, when we went down to Kansas State, we took the same game plan down there that we had here uh, under Coach Fry in terms of turning the program around, and uh, it, it worked there too. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, Coach Snyder has always done things in a class way, and that was from his mentor, Hayden Fry, as well, and Bill Brazier, uh, and Carl Jackson, all those guys, all the guys up here, Bernie. Uh, he does it the right way. Uh, he never lacks uh, the hard work that goes into it. Uh, and yeah, as far as hours, uh, he's still going 7 in the morning till about 11 at night, uh, Sunday through Sunday. And uh, I think usually Thursday night, we got one night off on Thursday night and so forth. But uh, we kind of laugh about it because he's, he's meticulous in what he does. And he was that way when he was here, certainly. Uh, you know, we, back in uh, January or so, Bill would have us uh, do scouting reports on opponents. And uh, we'd end up doing 11 scouting reports. Now it'd be 12 scouting reports for the whole season. And that was back in the year before we were ever going to play somebody. So you can see how meticulous he was. But uh, he, again, of course, he's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and, uh, you know, learned so much from him, uh, certainly. One thing I did learn is I'm 67, and I wasn't going to go as long as he was going to go. Uh, I retired last June. I, I, I'm trying to enjoy life a little bit now and not worrying about how to pick up a third down. So. Sometimes it's just as fun uh, just watching a game instead of uh, putting in 100 for, hours a for week. For sure, yeah. That, that, that's wonderful. Now, uh, Bernie, you were, without question, considered you know, I don't want to say ruthless, but one of the best recruiters in the country. You know, we're talking like the Harmon brothers uh, came here, Andre Tippett, uh, all kinds of people. I mean, you, you were considered uh, the godfather of the East Coast as far as recruiting. Uh, just, you were from there. So, uh, you know, what, uh, what did you, what made you, uh, you know, have the power to draw all these uh, really great future NFL players to the University of Iowa? Well, first thing, uh, you have to build up a great relationship with the high school coaches. And by that I mean, you know, there's all kinds of kids back east in all big cities that, you know, a little shaky at times. But uh, if you build up relationships with the high school coaches, they would be real honest with you. And not only that, they would help you recruit the kid because that young man played for that coach for four years or more and they're going to listen to him most of the time. So if you had the coach on your side, you're way ahead of everybody else. And I used to tell everybody that, that build relationships, when you get the kid, live up to what you told the high school coach. And that's what we did here. I used to tell the coaches, we're not only going to make him a good football player, but we're going to let him get his degree. We're going to make him graduate. And most of the time, that was true. And if you didn't get it, it was nobody's fault but your own. But uh, you know, you could live on that degree for a long time. But it was fun, and uh, Hayden was a different kind of guy. And he drove us all to be winners. Very good, very good. I do want to remind you, these coaches will all be at this table over here signing autographs after we're uh, done today. Don, you and uh, Coach Fry, both from a military background, and uh, I, I, could, I knew that right away when you came in and everything was, you know, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, and all that, but how, how did your uh, military background help, you know, both you and Coach Fry, you think, with the University of Iowa football? Well, I was fortunate enough to go to the United States Military Academy, and one thing that West Point does, they teach positive leadership. And you think about it, I spent those years in the Army, and those were valuable years. But if you're, if you're a young coach working with college-age players, they happen to be 18 to 22, just like a lot of those soldiers that you worked with as an Army officer. 
So really there were a lot of, a lot of parallels there. And the bottom line, you need to set a great example for those that work under you. You need to be sure they understand that you're gonna work just as long as they are. I always told my players, if you have a problem late at night, please do not call my home because my wife will not appreciate it because I'm at work, call me at work. I don't care what time it is, the odds are I'll be at work. And, uh, and I'll always welcome your call then, regardless of the hour. And the nice thing too, and I'm sure these coaches are all just like I am, when those players graduated, I explained to them, you have a friend for life. So if you have a problem 10 years from now, I hope you still have my phone number because I'll welcome your call regardless of whether it's day or night because really these are, these are relationships that are, that are built to last a lifetime. And I have gotten some unusual phone calls in the middle of the night sometimes uh, through the years. But a lot of these young men, of course, they might not have a father uh, at home. And in so many cases, the, the position coach is really more of a father figure to them than their own father. And that's an awesome responsibility for all of us to handle, but it's one we took very, very seriously. The bottom line, we're teachers. We're just glorified teachers. That's what we are, because, but we teach young men how to become men. And that's when you win, is when you convert young men into being responsible men. And that's our goal, always has been, and always will be. And I think it worked. <laughs> Carl, you had some of the, really the greatest running backs under you uh, in, in Iowa football history. Tell us, uh, you know, about a couple of your favorites and uh, what you enjoyed about some of those uh, running backs. Uh, that's true, I really had, uh the opportunity to work with some really great running backs, but also some great young men. And I think back to guys like Ronnie Harmon. Uh, Ronnie played in the NFL, but my, Ronnie was an outstanding running back for us at the University of Iowa. Uh, I don't think we really saw how great he could have been. He broke his leg like his sophomore, junior year, and, and then he really never really regained the kind of speed that, uh, that he had had before. But, you know, guys like Owen Gill, Norm Granger, Fred Russell, it just goes on and on. We had a lot, Nick Bell was a big, good running back. So, you know, I had just, just the, the uh, opportunity to coach a lot of great running backs here at the University of Iowa. But also a lot of them were, you know, they were great young men. And uh, uh, I enjoyed that, you know. I think the thing that stands out in my mind a little bit as I look back over my career at Iowa I came with Coach Fry in 1979, and uh, like we all said, Coach put some pretty high expectations on everybody. So, you know, that came with some pressure. So you, you work real hard, and you, you know, you won a lot of games, but you really don't enjoy it as much at the time that it's happening because you feel like this is something that I'm supposed to do. And then uh, I came back under Kirk, and I uh, had a chance to coach under Kirk, and I, I, I think I enjoyed my players just a little bit more. I took time to smell the roses a little bit more, and, I, and that's the thing that kind of stands out in my mind. With, the, with my 23 years here at Iowa, I just, my second time at Iowa, I just, I, I enjoyed it a lot more from just enjoying my players, whether they came to my house, or whether we just had meetings where we would sit and talk about life, but, uh, Obviously, uh, coaching here at Iowa is very special, and uh, my wife and my family will we, we'll always be Hawkeyes. We moved back to Texas about ten, well, eight years ago, but uh, you know, if Iowa's game is not on TV, and I, and I don't hear a score, that's the first score I look for look for on Sunday mornings. But again, it's uh, great to be a Hawkeye. It's great to be back in Iowa City, and. Uh, it's just good to be here today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Carl. Now, Dan McCarney, when he first started here, I think we lost a couple years in a row to Iowa State, right at the, right at the beginning. Afterwards, we beat him that one time, and every year we played him, I'd go over to the football office and he'd be going up and down the halls. It's Cloney Week, it's Cloney Week, and nobody got a team or a coaching staff up for a game more than he did for the Iowa State game. Now, the situation was reversed and he was over there in Ames and I know he was just as fervent about playing the Hawkeyes. So my question, Dan, is you had so much love for the Hawkeyes and you had 
I won't say hate, but you had such a competition with them, and then you switched it. But I guess that's the coach in you. But tell us a little bit how difficult that was for you and the fact that you always have still loved the Hawkeyes. Well, first of all, you go to the National Coaches Convention, as we all have many times, and there's over 10,000 coaches there once a year, different point places in the country. And uh, if you went and took a poll and said, listen, how many of you would like to have had the opportunity to coach at the University of Iowa or coach at Iowa State University, how many hands would have gone up in that 10,000? Most all of them because they're two great places and two great universities. And I got a chance to be at those two schools combined for 31 years. So if I'm gone tomorrow and, 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 uh, and I'm taking a dust nap for the last time, um, I got a chance to be here 31 years at these two great universities. But I grew up in Iowa City. I grew up a Hawkeye. I, got, I, I fooled somebody with my film in high school. And I got a chance to come here on scholarship at the University of Iowa. And um, I'll always, always be indebted to this place. But one of the things that's real obvious, and you listen to all these guys up here talking to this panel, we never wanted to let each other down. I never wanted to let Hayden Fry down, who hired me, but I sure as heck didn't want to let any of these professionals and these first-class coaches and people down. And so I went to work every day at Iowa real motivated that I wanted to do something special for my alma mater in a place that I grew up singing that fight song and jumping over snow fences when I was six and seven years old, because that used to be the only security outside of Kinnick. Snow fences. Some of you older people might remember those days. And me and my posse would jump the snow fences to get in. And then I got recruited, and then I got the opportunity and the honor to come here and, and, and play at Iowa. And then he gave me the honor, opportunity to coach. But as time goes on, then you never want to let people down. I never wanted to let Bill Brazier or Hayden Fry down because they gave me the opportunity to be the defense, defensive line coach here at Iowa. All this talent and all these real quality first-class people at this table up here, and Barry Alvarez and Hayden and, Bur and Bill Snyder are not here right now. I'd never wanted to let them down as a recruiter, as a coach, as a person. And then when I got the opportunity to go to Iowa State, and that was the third place, Iowa had lost for 20 years, and then we just turned this whole thing around and we were the story in the college football at Iowa. And then Bernie and I left and went to Wisconsin. And people don't remember those days. It was 36,000 in Camp Randall. It was pathetic. It was a joke. It was, a, it was ridiculous. It was embarrassing. And then this fall here in October, when Nebraska comes into Wisconsin, we've got our 25th reunion of the first Rose Bowl championship in the history of Wisconsin football. It all goes back to what we learned here in Iowa City, Iowa, under the leadership of Hayden Fry. And then I got the call to go be the head coach at Iowa State. And it, Believe me, I had mixed feelings. I just wasn't sure. They were winless. They were a joke. Their, their, their history, their success, their lack of success, their facilities, their attitude, all of that stuff had been so bad. But as a young guy, what do you want to do when you get in this profession? You want to run your own program someday. And without the talents and the contributions and the abilities of everybody at this table and the opportunity that Hayden Fry gave me, I would have never had a chance to be one of those 127 Division I head coaches out of 10,000. But I did, and I tried to make the most of it. And I never wanted, whether I was coaching against I or anybody else, but especially my hometown and my university that I love so much, I just wanted people to be proud. And you could cheer against me or hate me or throw stuff at us or whatever. I just wanted people to be proud of the effort that I gave as the leader of that university. And then we went from pathetic and ridiculous and embarrassing to successful in bowl games and, and, and some bowl championships, and we did some things that had never been done and went right back to the roots that I had and the contributions that we all gave and the things we did here together and the chemistry and the togetherness. And this thing that I learned a long time ago when I was young, and then I'll pass this on, loyalty is one of those things that it's, a, it's one of those things that there's not enough of it today. You see young people that nowadays want to be entertained instead of challenged. We were all challenged by Hayden Fry. And then the loyalty that permeated under Hayden Fry's leadership, and you see it with Kirk Ferentz as the head coach at Iowa now. It's uncommon, it's uncompromising, it's unconventional, but it's the best. And when you see people that wear those Iowa uniforms, and you see the people that wear their hats, and everybody here has got the Iowa colors on, and now that I live in Sarasota, Florida, and I see people all over down that got the Tiger Hawk stuff on, and we holler and we talk and we high five and we reminisce. There's something special that was done here through those years and I'll never forget it. I'll always cherish it and I'll always be blessed that I was a small part of it here with the Hawkeye program.
I think that's why we all feel we're all proud you were Hawkeyes, and uh, we're very happy to say you were our coaches. And, and I think, Bill, what's, what's the uh, final thing you could say? If you were going to say something to Hayden Fry right now, and he was right here, what would you say to him? Now you got to keep it clean. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'd be very careful what I said to him. <laughs> because I, I had known him. You know, we grew up together as kids and all that kind of stuff, and I knew a lot about him. And I knew that I could uh, say the wrong thing around him, so I was always careful about that too. <laughs> but it's a, it was a great it was a great time for me in my in my life and in my uh, uh, coaching experience to have been with him and I think all the coaches that were under him felt felt the same way well that, that's wonderful and I think everyone will join everybody uh, out there Hayden said we'll leave it up to the experts but how about everybody? Let's stand up and give it to the greatest coaching staff in University of Iowa history, right here. Thank you all for coming, and thank you for honoring this great coaching group.